Hey guys, Clayton here with Action VFX, and today we're going to be playing with guns. We're going to be taking this clip we shot for the muzzle flash teaser and turn it into this using Adobe After Effects and the Muzzle Flashes Volume 2 collection. Let's start by placing our source clip into a composition and adding some muzzle flashes from the Muzzle Flashes Volume 2 pack. Let's bring in the JV Side Continuous 1 clip. Since it's an automatic weapon, reposition the different muzzle flashes by keyframing the position and rotation of the flashes to match the gun. To save time, I will only be adding one flash, but you can apply these same techniques to the other flashes. Now set the muzzle flash blending mode to screen. If you would like to know more on why we are using this blending mode, check out this Action VFX tutorial for more information on that. This is looking alright, but it just looks like a muzzle flash layered over the barrel. Let's add some heat coming out of the barrel to really sell the effect. First add an adjustment layer called gun tip lighting and create masks with a slight feather to reveal the places where the hot gases escape. Add a brightness and contrast effect and set the brightness to 150. Then place a curves effect with the red curve increased in the highlights to warm up the flash some. Add a tint effect with the whites mapped to an orange color and change the amount of tint to 14. Now add another brightness and contrast with a brightness of 150. Let's add some more overall heat around the muzzle. Create another adjustment layer called muzzle lighting and mask on an area around the barrel. Feather it heavily. Add an exposure effect and increase the value to 0.48. Now let's add a curves and increase the red channel to give it some more warmth. Finally, add Red Giant's heat wave plugin. I use the default settings and decrease the intensity to 5. If you don't have heat wave, similar effects can be created using turbulent displacement. Now let's simulate the light casting from the flash. Add an adjustment layer called gun lighting and mask out an area around the flash. Add a feather of 167 to the mask. Add a brightness and contrast effect and set the brightness to 12. Next apply a curves effect with red slightly increased and add just a touch of green. And now we'll go back in and add some other areas the light would affect. I did these on the same adjustment layer and just lowered the mask opacity for the areas farther away from the barrel. Keyframe the overall layer opacity with a value of 100 during the flash and 0 before and after. This way it only lights up during the single frame. Since the shot is moving, we'll need to track the shot so the elements that last longer than a single frame will stick. Fire up Mocha for After Effects and click the Mocha logo to open the user interface. First, let's watch the clip and find a good area to track. The top of this wall should work well. I started in the middle of the clip and drew a rectangle on top of the wall using the X spline. Then I tracked it to the end. Next, track the beginning of the clip by tracking backwards from the middle to the start. This track is looking nice. So return to After Effects and make a new null called Roof Track. To apply the track, go to the Tracking Data tab in Mocha and click Create Track Data. Select the layer you used in Mocha for your track, and then go to Export Options and select Transform. Set your layer export to the null we just created, and click Apply Export. For more in-depth information on Mocha, I highly suggest checking out Mary Poplin's tutorials. She is by far the best instructor for Mocha, and we really don't deserve her. Shout out to you, Mary Poplin. Now it's time to add some smoke coming from the gun. For this shot, I combined both the side and angled smoke shots from Gun Smoke Volume 2 to give the appearance of the smoke wrapping around the barrel. These are looking too bright for the scene, so add an exposure effect and decrease the exposure by a value of negative 0.26. The smoke is still a little much, so lower the opacity on the side smoke to 35% and the angled smoke to 54%. That's looking better. Once placed, parent them to the roof track null so they can match the movement of the scene. Let's add some shells to the shot. Normally the dust cover would stay open for this specific rifle but we wanted to show you the process of it opening and closing since that's harder to fake in post. 
First, let's create the opening for the shells to eject out of. Create a new solid and set it to an almost black color. I sampled a color from one of the shadows on the stock to match the black levels in the scene. Then mask out a hole over the slide for the shells to come out of. Add a directional blur with the angle matching the direction of the slide and turn the blur length to 26. Drop in the 308 Brass Shell 1 clip from the free shell pack available on ActionVFX.com. Rotate the shell to line up with the opening and animate the shell flying out. Keyframe the first frame at the ejection point and the last point off screen. Then add a curve to the motion path to simulate the shell being ejected out and gravity pulling it down. Add a curves effect to match the shells to the scene. I raised my blues in the midtones and decreased the red in the midtones as well. Finally, add some motion blur to the layer and make sure it's turned on for the composition. Once you've done this process, you can duplicate the bullet shell and slide mask as many times as you need. Then change the animation path of the shells to add some randomness. Now for the subtle details. Blinking is a natural reaction when firing a gun. Since our actor was using a prop weapon, we had to add blinking eyes ourselves. First, we need to find a frame where our actor blinks. Once we find one, duplicate the layer and then draw a mask around your actor's eye during the blink. Mask out only the eye and place it in the position where you want the actor to blink. Once you're done masking the eye, set three keyframes on the mask path with the blink centered in the middle. Keyframe the position to line up with your actor's eyes over the three frames, then trim the clip to be three frames long. Once we've done that, we can now move our mask to a frame where we need our actor to blink. Move the position of the mask over our actor's eye. You may have to do some fine tuning depending on your scene and how much your actor is moving. Repeat this for the other eye and however many blinks you want to add to the scene. All right, there you have it. I hope you learned something new today. Let us know what you thought and subscribe for more action-packed content. This is Clayton from Action VFX. See you next time.